Mighty Companions, this is Earl Purdy. I want to welcome you to Facebook Live, and that ain't no jive. And we're going to be doing a course in miracles, which is a course in right thinking, a course in how to express love. And we are going to talk about the way to remember God, which is the way to remember love, the way to remember the truth. How do you do it? How do you remember your connection to source? And how do you remember your connection to love? So we're going to talk about that, but we're going to start out with our theme song, which is, I am not a victim of the world I see. I am not a victim of the world I see. Let's see here. Let's get it going. Unless the uh, battery has gone out. We'll see what's happening. It's always... Like my mom used to say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. <laughs> it's always something in the world. Like insane right now. So, so we're going to talk about the way to remember love, the way to remember God, and we're going to be on chapter in chapter twelve. Those of you who are following with the books, and we're going to be in section two, paragraph, um, paragraph three. Section two, the way to remember God, which is the way to remember love. And we're going to do paragraph three. So I want you to hear the guidelines. These are the only rules for the Course in Miracles, especially if you're here for the first time. These are the attitudes that the Course in Miracles says we need to take. First thing it says is that you need to remember that you need not believe the ideas. That you need not accept the ideas. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to accept it. And you don't have to even welcome what you're about to hear. You don't have to believe what you're about to hear. You don't have to accept what you're about to hear. And you don't have to welcome what you're about to hear. Some of the ideas you may actively resist some of the ideas. I may say some bad things that you feel resistance to. Some of the ideas you might find hard to believe. Some of the things I say, you may go, that's hard to believe. And some of the things I say may be startling to you. But you're not being asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. It's using the ideas. That's how the ideas will have meaning to you because if you use the ideas, that's when you see that the ideas work and when they're true. The Course in Miracles is a course in how to learn how to see things in such a way that you do not lose your peace. Do you know the Course in Miracles is always working at the level of the mind 
in the level of perception, and sometimes people miss, miss that. So the thing to keep in mind is that if you use these interpretations and meanings that the Course has given you, and use them to the point that they become habits for you, and just the way you look at things, you will see that it's true, because what will happen is you'll find that more and more you're not losing your peace. And the Course in Miracles teaches that the reason we don't hear our inner guidance, the divine guidance that we're all receiving, is because our minds are full of fear and conflict and worry and anxiety about one thing or another. And he says, and it says, when you're full of conflict and fear and confusion, you can't hear the still, small voice of the creator love inside of you. So if you're always upset, always worrying, always analyzing, always judging, then the Course says you won't hear the inner guidance that you're getting. And all of us are receiving inner guidance all the time. But the Course in Miracles says you don't hear the inner guidance because you're listening to yourself. You're listening to your mind talk. You're listening to your ideas about what you should do and how you how you should do it. So, so we were talking about how you should look at uh, sickness, <clears throat> and we said last time that sickness is any form of lack of peace. That sickness isn't just talking about a physical <coughs> illness. The Course in Miracles defines sickness as any time you're not feeling peace. That's a form of sickness. And so we were told to see sickness as a call for love. So I'm going to offer you the love that you are asking me for through your sickness or your unhappiness. So the court says, I am to give you what you believe you can't offer yourself. So a person who is sick, angry, upset, full of grievances, the Course in Miracles said that is that's a person who's actually not offering themselves love. So you can offer them what they can't offer themselves, which is another perception of what they're going through. Now, whatever the sickness, and this, do you know that whatever the sickness, the Course in Miracles teaches that whatever the sickness, there's this one remedy. There's this one remedy. No matter what the sickness is, there's just one remedy. And... The remedy is for you to see it as what it is, which is a call for love, a call for help, a call for healing, a call for God. The Course of Miracles calls this world and everything that's going on in this world a great, big, plaintive call for help in a world of misery. We just a bunch of people screaming to the universe and to spirit, help me, please. And it's taking the form of all the stuff we're upset about, worried about the things that we think is going crazy in the world right now. That's a bunch of beings screaming to, for help, and they're calling for love. And you are going to be made whole when you are willing to be a part of making other people whole. So the universal law is I'm going to be healed as I allow myself to be used for healing. So what, what, so what is the Course in Miracles doing? It's giving us very precise answers to the things that people ask about all the time. You're looking at sickness, you're looking at a call for love. What are you supposed to do? Give that person the love that they can't give themselves right now because if they were really giving it to themselves right now, they wouldn't be sick and unhappy right now. When will you be whole? Well, as soon as you are willing to be a means for everybody else being whole and healed. Then it goes... You will be made whole as you make whole for to perceive in sickness the appeal for health. So instead of saying, when I, instead of telling people I'm sick, what the Course has taught me to say is, you know, I'm calling for, I'm calling for health right now and it's taking the form of what feels like a cold. I'm calling for health right now. It's taking the form of a backache. I'm calling for health right now. So whatever the physical condition or illness as well as the unhappiness that a person is going through, we're being told to recognize that they're, what they're really calling for is health. So if you walk up to a person that's sick and say, can I join with you in the idea of your health and your healing? I've never, ever met a person who refused. It's, it's, I've never met a person that said, can I join you in things getting better for you? Going, oh, no, you better not do that. 
right? But if you go to the person and you say, oh, I see that you're really sick, sometimes the minute you tell a person that they're sick, they'll deny it. Even if they are, they'll tell you they feel okay. So the truth is, whenever you see sickness, you're looking, this is an appeal for health. And when you see hatred, you're calling for love. You're looking at a call for love. So all the so-called hatred that seems to be going on, especially in today's political climate, we are really looking at great big old intergalactic calls for love coming down, right? That's what we're doing. We're calling for love. So if I answer your call for love, then I'm actually giving you what you really want. I know what you really want is love. I know what you really want is peace. I know what you really want is safety. So I'm going to be safe. I'm going to be loving, and I'm going to see what you are doing as a call for love. In other words, I'm going to give you what you really want. What you really want is some love. What you really want is some peace. That's what your sickness represents. That's what your anger represents. That's what your upset represents. It's you calling for love, calling for help, calling for healing. So what do you do? Well, the Course says to give a person what they really want is to offer it to yourself, for your creator wills you know that other person as yourself. I'm doing the Course in Miracles in plain language. So when I'm watching the Course and I'm doing the Course, after 40 years of working with the Course and seeing miracles in my life and all the people that I've worked with in all these years, I'm not saying this from a theoretical perspective. I'm not, I'm not talking to you from the perspective of I hope this is true and I hope it works. I'm talking to you from the perspective of having seen it work in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people and also seen it not work in people and, and know the difference between the two. Uh, the ones who get the results are the ones who do what it says. The ones who don't are the ones who just analyze it but don't actually practice it or study it, or put any energy into it. But they also expect to get all the blessings and all the benefits. That's the funny part about it, though. It's like, I think I should get the benefit just because I heard you say this. No, I'm going to bake a cake first. I got to read the recipe. But that's not the same as putting the ingredients together. So right now, I'm just sharing the recipe with you. Uh, the recipe is answer another person's call for love, and yours is going to be answered. Answer another person's call for help, and then you are going to be answered. So how do I get answers from the universe? How do I see solutions happening to the issues that's causing me a problem? Then I need to answer your call for love. I answer your call for love by being as peaceful and loving towards you as I can possibly be. And if I really want to answer your call for love, I'm going to give you to the higher power. I'm not going to see myself as being the one that's ultimately responsible for helping you. I'm going to see something that's much greater in its intelligence and love. I'm going to allow that to help you. Then I'm going to ask the higher power, if there's anything for me to do, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? And who do you want me to say it to? So I'm going to ask if there's anything that I can do. But the first thing I'm going to do to anybody I care about is give them to God. I'm going to give them to a higher power. If I want a higher power or the universe to solve my problems and help me out when I'm going through challenges, shouldn't I do the same thing for yours? I mean, why is it that I can give mine to spirit, but then I'm telling myself I'm supposed to solve yours, though? And you see that all the time. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm praying and I'm giving the stuff that I'm going through to a higher power, but I've got to solve the, all the problems of my friends and relatives that they're going through. No, if you really are giving what you're going through to a higher power, why wouldn't you care enough about the people you know to give their stuff to a higher power too? And then ask, ask, what do you need to do? And if there's anything for you to do. Now, the Course in Miracles says something very radical about how you can tell when spirit is instructing you to help somebody because one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they're making up their own mind as to who they should help. The Course in Miracles says a consciously selected miracle can be misguided. What does that mean? You deciding who needs your help and what you're supposed to do for them, that can be totally misguided. You may not be the person that's supposed to help them at all. Just because you think you're supposed to help that person doesn't mean that you are the one. So how do you know? Well, the Course in Miracles says, well, I'll tell you how you know. First of all, 
anything that spirit tells you to do, you're going to feel inspired. You're not going to feel like it's a sacrifice. You're not going to go, oh my God, I can't believe I, I'm supposed to help this joker. You know, it's like, no, that is not, you aren't the one. You aren't the one. He said, and the other things is when spirit tells you to do something, you'll be inspired, you will be willing to do it, and you will be able to do it. And if you don't meet those criteria, then you really are just deciding on your own that this is the situation that you're supposed to handle. And so sometimes people go, well, what about your children? And what about your relatives? And what about, you know, with th they're usually the hardest ones for you to help anyway. Actually, they're usually the main ones that give you pushback when you try to interfere with whatever's happening in their life, first of all. And it's the same rules apply. If you are supposed to be the one to help Cousin Maybell, then you will feel inspired to help Cousin Maybell, and you will be able to help Cousin Maybell, and you will be able to, to do helping her. So put everything, every time you think you're supposed to do something for someone, put it through that test. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that we've been so culturally programmed to feel guilt about everything. So you may still go ahead and try to help Cousin Maybell just because you feel too guilty if you don't. You may still try to help your aunt, your mother, your brother, your sister, even though your inner self is saying, no, this is a sacrifice. I don't feel good about doing this. I feel upset. Uh, you, your guilt may still make you do it. So you go ahead. You do whatever it is you feel like you need to do, but keep working toward only doing the things that you can do guiltlessly. A conscious being does not allow themselves to be manipulated by guilt, either the guilt that they put on themselves or by the guilt that someone's trying to put on them to make them do what they want them to do. When you wake up, people are going to call you cold a lot of times because you won't allow yourself to be manipulated by others the way you were in the past, the way they could use guilt and anger on you to get you to do things you didn't really want to do. As you wake up spiritually, you will not allow yourself to be manipulated that way. So the people who are trying to manipulate you through guilt and anger, they'll say you're being cruel, mean, and selfish. But you won't fall for it anymore. And then they might just separate from you. They might go, huh, you won't do what I want you to do the way I want you to do it. I'm never going to speak to you again. Then you could go, hmm, the person who's attacking me, not seeing me correctly, not really appreciating me, just told me that they might not see me anymore. Is that really a loss? <laughs> yeah, if you feel guilty, if you're still able to be manipulated by guilt, you'll run up behind them and beg and plead them not to go. But if you're a conscious being, you will give them an opportunity for you all to heal. If they don't want to take that opportunity, you will bless and release them and you'll move on. That's, see, the Course in Miracles says, let me tell you, the, let me teach you the difference between how a, a sane, conscious, loving mind operates and then how an insane, unconscious, fearful mind operates. It goes, let me, let me tell you, let me show you the difference in how a person who thinks they're one with you operates and a person who thinks they're separate from you operates. And, and then you'll be able to choose for the one that will give you the greatest amount of peace. I went, okay, that's fair enough. Okay, well, what do you do? Well, healing is going to be the love that you have for your true self and the love that you have for the creator of yourself. Since you didn't create yourself, something created you, so it would stand the reason that something that gave you life might be something you like to appreciate and love. Yeah, just a, just a thought. Then the next thing it says is that if you want to heal, you got to love the Christ in you and it defines the Christ in you as your true self. Your one self that we, the one self that we all share. So don't get caught up in the terminology of the Course in Miracles because it has its own meanings for all the words that you're hearing. So if you want to heal, what do you do? If you want to have more joy, what do you do? It's your love for yourself that's going to heal you. And it's the love you have for that which created you that will heal you. Most people go, First of all, they go to some physical thing on the outside that they think they need to do in order to be healed, some kind of medicine or some kind of counseling or some type of... We go to the outer. We think healing is something that has to happen from, from the outer. The Course in Miracles is saying, no, the truth is you're only sick and unhappy because there's some part of you that's not loving you. 
then you're not loving yourself the way that you should. And you're not loving that which created you the way that you should. So that's why you have sickness or what you call unhappiness. So what I want you to start doing is I want you to start to get rid of all the fear and the blocks that you have that keep you from allowing yourself to experience love. I'm going to, I want you, I'm going to, I want to help you get rid of every block to love that you got inside of you because what will heal everything that's happening in your life would be you loving yourself more. Okay, okay, that's cool. Now notice this is just one paragraph. And in this one paragraph, we've gotten about seven different answers about how to get past any kind of sickness and upset. But do you know the Course says the reason why a person doesn't hear the answers that come from the truth is because it's not the answer they made up. So what they're really doing is looking for you to say the answer that they, in resolution, that they've already come up with. And so since you're saying something that's different from the way they've decided it is, I've decided that I got the cold because I was hanging out with my cousin last night. So I need you to tell me what would be the best cold remedy to buy at the store. But if, you, but if, if I said to you, oh, you got a cold, well, the reason why you have a cold is you're not loving yourself enough and you're not loving that which created you enough. You need to be giving yourself a lot more self-love right now. The average person would look at me like I was nuts, yeah. right? Because the real answer is not the answer they would have made up in their own mind. So, so when people really say they're open to another way of looking at things, many times what they're saying is I'm open to another per person seeing things the way I do. But suffering is such a good way to motivate people to change. It, it's, not the, it's not the way that has to trigger change, but the average person needs intense suffering before they will make any kind of real change. And the average person, as long as they can procrastinate and put off the change as long as possible, they do it to the very last second and the very last minute. So... What we want to do is we want to voluntarily make the change before we have to go through the suffering. Again, that's what a conscious person does. A conscious person goes, really, I have reached my limit of pain and suffering and upset and unhappiness. I've reached my limit. I'm willing to admit I must be wrong about something or I'd already be happy. So I'm, I do want to look at things another way. I really don't know actually what will make me happy because I've been trying all my life to come up with what I think is going to make me happy. And so far, nothing I've ever received has permanently made me happy where I wasn't immediately looking for something else that I would think would make me happy. So actually, I've never been successful at making myself happy. I just come up with different things I think will make me happy, see if it will, and then it never does. So then I go after the next thing I think is gonna make me happy. Then I assign roles to everyone I know in terms of what they're supposed to do as part of my plan to make me happy. And then if they don't do the thing that I've assigned to them to help make me happy, then I say that they don't support me, and then I go into therapy to learn forgiveness. <laughs> right and the truth is the only thing that their crime is they didn't do what you wanted them to do they didn't act out the role you assigned and if you'll be honest with yourself you didn't even, didn't even ask them if they wanted to do the role you assigned to them so most people are forgiving people for not for what, for what they did to them most people are forgiving people for what they did not do <laughs> I love the course of says no you forgive people for what they didn't do First of all, they're not the ones that are making you unhappy right now. What do you mean? Did you, you know what happened to me when I was in the seventh grade? Uh, but you're not in the seventh grade now. <laughs> so what's determining the way that you feel right now? Do you know where that's coming from? Where? What you're telling yourself right now? <laughs> Everything you're doing and happening in your life right now it's coming from what you're telling yourself right now about what happened to you when you was in the seventh grade. And you're bringing what happened in the seventh grade into this now moment. And then you're interpreting your present based on the seventh grade. And so you're projecting what happened in the seventh grade into your future. Whenever you use your present moment to interpret things in terms of the past, you project that past into your future and then you experience it again and you call it your pattern. It's only your pattern because of the mind talk that you're giving yourself in this moment. That's what the chorus says. I went, woo, man, thank you. 
So then we go, so the next thing the course does in this is it gives one of the best analogies I've ever seen of what's going on with all of us. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Remember what was said about the frightening perceptions of little children. So I want you to think about yourself when you were a little child. I can remember being a little child, getting uh, afraid and then hiding my head on the blanket. Anybody here ever done that? Ever, ever as a kid, put a, pull a blanket over your head because you had some level of fear about something? Well, uh, the perceptions of things that frighten you are always perceptions that you don't understand what you're looking at and you don't understand what's happening. So fearful perceptions come from really not understanding what you're looking at. What's happening is like beyond your comprehension. So the Course in Miracles says, so when you are afraid like a little child and what you are perceiving is frightening you, uh, if you will ask for enlightenment and if you will accept enlightenment, do you know that that's how you get your fears to vanish? So he just told us, the Course in Miracles just told us how to make your fears vanish. So when, that, when, so when it says stuff like that, your, their fears vanish, I go, Okay, I was just told what would make my fears vanish. I might want to go back and look at that one more time. <laughs> this seems like this worthwhile. Okay, so it says, if you will ask for the truth, which is enlightenment, and then the once you ask for it, you accept it, your fears or your sickness will vanish. In other words, okay, you're frightened because you're sick, and it's terrifying you. So you're asking for the truth about it and how you deal with it. And then it says, you ask for enlightenment. Okay, then we got enlightenment. We got enlightenment a paragraph ago when it says, if you learn how to love yourself, you'll get rid of your pain and your suffering. That was the answer, loving yourself more, not being manipulated by guilt and anger and fear. Be it guilt and anger and fear from yourself or guilt and anger and fear coming at you from somebody else. If you want to be healthy, then you do not allow yourself to be manipulated by that because when you get angry and upset, what is happening? You are attacking yourself. When I get mad at you, I'm feeling that anger. I'm feeling every ounce of that upset. It's, it's attacking my cells, my body, breaking my body down, break, making me sick because of how I'm looking at you. So I am, it's just like me being mad at you and then smacking myself instead of you. And, and that's what I angry, guilty people do all day long and they don't know it. You're mad about this and then you're mad about that. So you're going, the Course of Miracles say, say to yourself, I'm attacking myself about this and I'm attacking myself about that. And when I get home, I'm going to talk to my partner about what I'm upset about. So I'm going to attack myself about that. And the Course says, every time you have any kind of negative feeling or emotion, just tell yourself, this thought is an attack upon myself. This is attacking me. He says, and then one day what's going to happen is you'll stop. Because your mind has already been trained to not attack yourself. You've already been told that's a dumb thing for you to hurt yourself. So if you keep saying you're hurting yourself with all these anger and attack and guilt thoughts, your mind is going to automatically want to stop your upset. So the Course in Miracles says, uh, if you ask for the truth and then you accept it, that's when your fears will vanish. But if you hide your fears, if you hide what you really feel, then you're going to keep it. So if you are hiding from yourself what you really feel, you're going to keep it. So even if you don't tell anybody else the way you really feel about yourself or other people or things, be honest with yourself about it. Don't hide your fears or your nightmares from yourself because you're going to keep them. So it's, help, it's easy to help an uncertain child. It's easy to help a child that's in fear because when you're dealing with a child, what makes a child so much easier to help than an adult is that a child recognizes they don't understand what their perception is. A child will come up to you and go, I really don't understand that, Dad. I don't, really, I don't understand that. I'm, I, I, don't, I just don't understand. Uh, most adults would rather say anything than I don't know and I don't understand. <laughs> because as an adult, of course, says we're taught to be autonomous, self-sufficient that we're supposed to know everything. That's the meaning of being an adult. You can handle everything on your own. 
you know the way that's best. Not only for you, but for everyone. So the course is saying it's easy to help a child simply because a child will recognize that they don't understand what they're looking at. They don't understand what it means. He says, but you do believe you understand your perceptions. You do believe you understand your perceptions. So the spirit comes back and says, guess what? Little child, you're hiding your head. And you're hiding your head under the cover of the heavy blankets that you have laid on yourself. So you're hiding under the blankets you have put over yourself. In other words, you are hiding your nightmares. You are hiding your fears. You are hiding your guilt. You're trying to hide your insecurities. He says you are trying to hide your separation. And you are hiding your nightmares in the darkness of your own false certainty. So where do I hide my fears? I hide my fears behind me acting like I'm certain and I know what's going on. See, I'm presenting to you this confident exterior. This confident exterior is hiding a bunch of fears I have right now. So we hide our nightmares or fears behind our false certainty. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you for telling me that spirit. <laughs> Where am I hiding my fears? Uh, beneath my bro bravado, beneath my you know, as a man, you're supposed to say anything but that you feel afraid. That's like the man code. Men tend never to want to say under any circumstances, I'm really scared. So men have a tendency, and there are always exceptions, but men have a tendency to show their fear through anger and attack. See, it's, I can't, it's too feminine for me to cry and say, I'm just afraid. So I'm going, to, I'm going to fix you. See, the, the masculine has their fear sometimes behind bravado. Like, he's, like the book just said, false certainty. Acting like I'm, I got it together more than I actually got it together. And so the Course in Miracles says that you are refusing to open your eyes. Do you know you are refusing to open your eyes and just look at your fears? Look at your misperceptions. Look at what it is you think you feel guilt about. Open your eyes and look. Don't save your nightmares. Don't save your fears. Why is it that you shouldn't save your fears? Why is it that you shouldn't save your nightmares? The Course in Miracles says, because they're not fit offerings for you. For you to be suffering and angry and upset and going through lack. He says, that's not a fit offering for you. You deserve better than what you're giving to yourself. You deserve more than what you're giving to yourself. You deserve more love than you're giving to yourself. You deserve more love than you're giving to yourself. You deserve more love and happiness than you're giving to yourself. You deserve relationships that are even more real than what you've given to yourself. Your nightmares, your fears, your insecurities, stop offering those things to yourself. They're not fit offerings for you. They're not fit offerings for you. You deserve better than what you're giving to yourself, especially if you're not feeling joy and you're not feeling happy and you don't feel peaceful. Then you are giving yourself unfit offerings. See, the Course in Miracles says repeat it. Repeat it, repeat it, over and over again, over and over again, over and over again. So any gift that you wouldn't give to your creator is not a gift that's worthy of you. So you deserve whatever the creator deserves, you deserve. What gets, you, know, you know what gets to me about the Course in Miracles and it can make it such a challenge to teach, I guess I like challenges, is because what it says is so loving that is incomprehensible to most people that are listening to it. So because it's so loving, the tendency is to tune out because it's more than you think you deserve for yourself. So when it says stuff like, if you are going through any kind of pain, suffering, and insecurities, those are not fit offerings for you. When you're afraid, you're just calling for love, and yet you should receive that love, and everybody should give you that love that you deserve. Uh, you're hiding under the blankets of your fears. Don't be afraid. Open your eyes. Look at your fears. And if you look at your fears, then you will see past your fears. So the first thing I want you to do is know that spirit can't remove something you're not willing to look at. So first thing you need to do is be willing to look at what's going on. The once you're willing to look at it and you give it to your higher self, then your higher self, first of all, is going to give you another way to look at it. So if you would get out the way, 
of the healing because you're the only block. Let's get that clear to say, he said, he says, there'll never be a solution to a problem in your life that you remove you from. I said, what? Yeah. The minute you, he said, the minute that you take you out of the problem, he said, you made the problem unsolvable because it's always something that you at some level have chosen. And I went, okay. So I made the decision with the Course of Miracles that I am going to, as clearly as I can, be able to help people hear what he's saying. Because he says, uh, what is it that frightens people when they get ready to take a look at their fears? He says, well, I want you to take off the covers. What does that mean? I want you to look at what you're afraid of. Well, we're doing it every time we open our eyes. <laughs> so that's already covered. We're already looking at what we're afraid of. Then the course says, only the anticipation of looking at what you are afraid of will frighten you. So what is, what is frightening people? What they think they're going to see if they look at their fears, right? If I tell you, I want you to look at the nightmares and I want you to look at what you've been hiding, then it's the anticipation you have about what you're going to see that causes the fear. I'm afraid of what I'm going to see if I look deep inside myself, if I look deep inside my nightmares. So the Course of Miracles says, well, the reality of nothingness can't be frightening. <laughs> so there is nothing about you that you think is negative in any way that is actually true about you. There's not one negative thought you have about yourself in any way that's actually true about you. There is not one negative, guilty, angry, so-called sinful thought that you have about yourself that's true. Nothing you believe about yourself that's making you feel bad is true. Nothing you believe about yourself that makes you feel less than love for yourself is true. So you're going to see that it's not true when you're willing to look at it. So let's not delay this. You could be happy today. So let's not delay this. You could have the kind of happiness that you've always, always wanted. You could have that happiness today. So how do you do that? Okay, I'm about to tell you. This is how you absolutely get rid of make, make, your, make your fear vanish and experience more love and more peace than you ever, ever experienced in your life. What is it that you should do in the midst of turmoil? If you're in the midst of, of anger and you're in the, in the midst of guilt or fear or lack or sickness and you're in the midst of a conversation that you're having with someone that's full of turmoil, he says, what should you do in the midst of turmoil? Learn to be quiet. So he said, what? Learn how to shut your mouth. Learn how to shut your mouth in the middle of a conflict in the middle of an upset, in the middle of something that's full of attacks, learn to be quiet. Quietness is the end of the strife. Quietness is the end of the conflict. When you don't take part and you become quiet, especially when you're feeling like attacking and angry, and want to go off, if you will learn how to use your angry, upset feelings as a cue that you should be quiet instead of using your anger and upset as a cue that you should attack and let everybody know just how you feel. <laughs> if you could be quiet when you're upset. Now, now we can kind of like, right, those of you watching online and in here, right now we can go, oh, yes, of course. Just be quiet. Just <laughs> Earl, I don't even know why you're saying this. But you all know as well as me that the minute you lose it, you're gone. You've gone crazy for a while and you become a lunatic and you're not that quiet person sitting up in front of me right now. You know you're not. When you go off into crazy land, like we all go from time to time when we get hurt, then you not talking and you being quiet would be a major accomplishment when you're upset. Because when a person is upset, it's when they feel like their safety depends on how much anger and attack they can put on you. That that's what's going to make them feel safe. So he says, why is it that you need to be quiet? He says, well, the reason why you need to be quiet is because I don't know how you to tell you this, but you're supposed to be on a journey to peace. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I am on this path because I want to be on the journey to peace. 
So, so what? So how should you, how should you look at anything or anyone that appears to be delaying you? The court says, look straight at them. What? He says, look at, don't hide nothing that's delayed. Sometimes you can use people in your life to delay you. And, you, and he says, look at them. Look at whatever you see or you are believing that delays you, look at it. And then the court says, uh, the goal is inevitable. The, what is the goal? The goal is your happiness, your healing, your peace. Your happiness, your healing, your peace. The goal is your happiness, your healing, your happiness, your peace, your joy. The goal is your freedom. The goal is your unity, your abundance, your happiness. The goal for everybody else is their love, they, for them to have love and to have joy and to have happiness. That's the goal. What is the goal? The goal is love. What is the goal? The goal is love. So if the goal is inevitable, you know why you're going to end up in perfect love? Because that goal is eternal. So that goal, and a goal that lasts all the time, you're going to have to eventually deal with it and do. <laughs> so you are going to be happy one day. You are going to be happy one day. You're going to have total peace and total joy one day. You are not going to be worrying about anything. You're not going to feel lonely. You're not going to be concerned. You're going to feel truly joyful. And you're going to truly, you really going, that's going to happen to you. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. Inevitable means it's going to happen to you. Okay. Now, what makes you doubt me is maybe you can't figure out how that's going to happen. See, that's what makes the doubt happen, is that, what you mean, I'm going to be happy one day? I, I don't know how I could be permanently happy all the time, no matter what. I don't know how to make myself, I, can, I don't even do a good job of making myself happy during a date. So how am I going to make myself happy every minute, every day from now on? I'm glad you mentioned that, Spirit says. You are not. You can't do it. You can't make yourself eternally joyful and eternally happy. It's not something you will ever be able to pull off by yourself on your own. And that's what I want you to know. Your own past lack of success in giving yourself any kind of permanent happiness should be enough to let you know you really need to resign as your own teacher. If you would honestly look at the results of you trying to make yourself happy all the time, you would honestly resign because after a while, the only thing that you do is you keep coming up with the same thing in just a different flavor or a different form. It, it's not, your, your new plan isn't really that different from the plans you always had. You just put a different twist on it. But it's basically the same plan, which is you coming up with how other people need to change and how something outside of yourself needs to be different in order for you to be happy. That's your plan that will never work. You, you keep trying to come up with ways to get everybody and everything else outside of you to change and be different. That job is going to be different is going to do it. That partner that's different is going to do it. That different financial situation is going to make me happy. If I get a chance to travel, if somebody spoke at He said, the Course of Miracles says, your plan that will never, ever work is, if this were different, I would be happy. He said, the person who has that attitude will never know true joy. Because what you're saying is, wherever you are isn't good enough for your joy. Wherever you are, something's got to be different. It's like I'm with you, and then I'm thinking about how I would enjoy being with another woman, or you being with me and thinking about another guy. Then you're saying, if I was different, you would be happy. But if something has to be different in order for you to be happy, then you can never be happy in the present moment. You can never be happy in the now if something always has to be different in order for you to be happy. So the truth is that plan will never work. But the plan that will work is for you to realize that you have a right to be loved. You have a right to be loved. You have a right. You are entitled to be loved. You will never have to earn the love of a person that loves you. You never have to earn the love of a person that loves you. That is not a characteristic of love is that you have to earn it. But it is a characteristic of specialness that you have to earn it. See, in order for you to be special to me, then I got some things that you need to do and not do. 
So specialness you have to earn, but also specialness is something that a person can take away from you as easy as they gave it to you. You meant everything to me, now you mean nothing to me. See, I gave you the specialness, and then I took the specialness away. And why did I take the specialness away? Because you didn't do something the way I wanted you to do it. It's always that. Somebody didn't act out your script. And the Course in Miracles says, Earl, I want you to know that is not love. Just in case you're wondering, that is not love. Love is unconditional. Love does not change. Love just grows. It just expands. It frees. It never attacks. It wants you to only do what you want to do. So what you are experiencing is specialness. And so the Course in Miracles is saying to us, the goal is inevitable because it's eternal. What is the goal? The goal is love. And I want you to know that as your friend, as your partner, what I'm going to do to my partner is I'm going to tell my partner, love is your right. And, and love belongs to you despite your fears, despite your insecurities. You deserve to be loved. You only deserve love. See, that's what I'm going to say to my partner. That's what I'm going to say to my friend when my friend is afraid or angry or upset. I'm there to remind you that the goal of this relationship is love. And, and the love that we want in our friendship or relationship, that's our right. And it belongs to us despite our ego. It belongs to us in spite of how much we love each other or whether or not we're 100% sane every day. Nobody's 100% sane every day that's in this world because you couldn't be in this world and be 100% sane. <laughs> The aliens are not abducting people. They're dropping them off. <laughs> it's no accident as far as the eyes can see. We see no sign of intelligent life. All the intelligent life is staying as far away from us as they possibly can. That's why it's called an intelligent life. <laughs> Think about it. <clears throat> Who would want to bring a species that destroys their own environment to their planet? I was looking at the poll the other, this morning, and they were talking about the, the things that's most on, mm -hmm. on, on people's minds. Do you know where climate change was? Mm -hmm. It was like 4%. It was like at, almost at the very bottom of the concerns. It's the very, and even though we're seeing evidence of it for whatever reason, all the time. My point is that the things, when you don't love <coughs> yourself, the things that sustain you are the things you get rid of. And that's what the Course in Miracles says, stuff like that. And it makes people mad. He says, well, oh, you want to know why you came to earth? Oh, uh, souls come to earth to die. The, the souls that think they're so guilty that they don't think they deserve to live, those souls come to earth so that they can learn how to forgive themselves for the negative beliefs they have about themselves and others. Earth, You come to earth so you can learn how to let go of your grievances and your blocks. So there's no accident that the one thing everybody agree on here is that death is the one thing we can agree on. So why is it that the one truth out of the entire world that you can get the most people to agree with is that you die? That that's the one thing you can count on? He says, because all of you know you made this world to die in because you didn't think you deserved to live, because you felt so guilty. So you are here to learn how to love yourself and to remember that you deserve love no matter what you think you've done. That love is going to help you and nurture you and fix you and heal you no matter what you feel about yourself. You all have forgotten what love looks like and what love really is. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to be quiet when you're in the middle of turmoil. I, I want you to start stop being afraid to look at your fears and look at your misperceptions. Remember that you're going to be loved because love is the goal. That's why you're here. You're here so that you can really know what love is. Because if you don't recognize what love is, if someone shows up who's really loving to you, you wouldn't even recognize them. So you have to learn how to even recognize when you're in the presence of someone that's really loving you and appreciating you. So you want what God wants for you. You want that love. And there's not a nightmare or a false belief that you have that can, that can defeat you and your purpose. There's nothing that's going to stop you from having joy and happiness in the end all the time. And that doesn't have to happen after you die. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. I'm going to do a quick little recap of a few of the points that I made. 
I'm going to do the love offering. If you care to make a donation, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. And if you don't, you're totally, completely innocent, and you're totally, completely loved. I needed to hear that, and I need to remember that. So those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, you can go, you can go to my website. My website is Earl Purdy at earlpurdy.com. And you can use Venmo and Zelle and the Cash App and PayPal. And all you need is my email address, Earl Purdy at Earl Purdy, Purdy, P-U-R-D-Y, Earl Purdy at earlpurdy.com. Thank you so much. This weekend will be my 42nd anniversary of teaching the course and studying the course. And uh, it has been the best thing that I could have ever possibly have done to myself. You have no idea where I've come from and how much this material has helped me and thousands of others that I've had a chance to work with. So if you want to, on Sundays, you're welcome to come in, in person to watch the presentation at 1 p.m. Mountain Time on Facebook Live on the Earl Purdy page. You can watch it online and in person. You can come to 1555 Race Street in Denver, Colorado, 80206. 1555 Race Street. So if you're in the Denver area, feel free to come down and join me in person. Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, I do what I call Hardcore Course in Miracles. Hardcore Course in Miracles. This is a Course in Miracles Facebook Live presentation that is geared toward people who are actually studying the course, that are actually giving it attention and giving it study. So I also want to be helpful to those students who are actually reading and doing the material. So this, so Thursday is a hardcore. Anybody can watch. But just keep in mind that I'm going to be teaching from a perspective that I'm talking to people who are studying it and want to study it. So that's 7 p.m. Mountain Time every Thursday on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. On YouTube, I have a thousand videos. So you can watch all kinds of videos of me teaching the course on YouTube and also on my website and on Facebook. I'm available for one-on-ones called Clarity Sessions. So if you'd like to have a Clarity Session with me, go to my website, it explains it in detail, and you can book a self-book an appointment with me right online. I'm here to be truly helpful. So I would love to have an opportunity to work with you on a one-on-one -on -one to, to change some situation or circumstance that you know you've reached your limit and you're ready to have a different way of dealing with it. So here we go. So anything that you see that's going on in the world right now that looks fearful, or wherever you think you see some form of sickness, Say to yourself, it's a call for love, 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 it's a call for love. That anger is a call for love. That sickness is a call for love. That set that sickness is a call for love. That disease is a call for love. That war is a call for love. That political situation is a call for love. Climate change is a call for love. Racism. Is a call for love. It's a call for love. It's a call for love. Everything you see is a call for love. It's a call for love. It's a call for love. Everything you see is a call for help. It's a call for help. It's a call for God. It's a call for help. It's a call for God. It's a it's a it's a call for help. It's a call for God. That's all you're seeing. You are going to be healed as you allow yourself to be used for the healing of others. So if you want your problem solved. Be willing to be a means for the problems of others to be solved through you. Yeah, it's a call for love. It's a call for love. Everything you see is a call for love. It's a call for love. It's a call for love. Everything you see is a call for love. That person is angry and attacking and sad and depressed. They are, they are called for love. They are called for love. 
that's what they are. They're calling for love. That person that has that sickness, that disease, that painful experience that they're going through right now. It's a call for love. It's a call for love. If you want to be healed, you need to love yourself a whole lot more. If there's any area of your life that you need healing, you need to love yourself more. Love yourself more. Love yourself more. And if there's something that's frightening you right now, if there's something you're seeing in your life that's frightening you right now, tell yourself it's because you don't understand what it's for. Tell yourself, I don't understand what I'm looking at. That's why I'm frightened. I don't understand what I'm looking at, and that's why I'm frightened. I don't know what this means, and so that is why I'm frightened. But if you ask for help, if you ask for the truth and you accept it, your fears are going to vanish if you will. Now, you have the truth. The Course in Miracles is one way the truth can reach you. So you have the truth, but you have to accept it at some level. And when you accept this truth, your fears vanish when you accept the truth. It's easy to help an uncertain child. Why is it easy to help an uncertain child? Because an uncertain child, they recognize they don't know what the hell what they're looking at means. But you think you do understand what you're looking at. But you're hiding your head under the blanket. You're hiding your head under the blanket that you have put over yourself. Stop hiding your fears under your false certainty. Open your eyes. It's time to open your eyes. It's time to open your eyes. Do you know that fear and pain and lack and upset, it's not a fit offering for you. You deserve tremendous, sensational, spectacular love and spectacular happiness. You deserve a sense of safety that cannot be threatened by anything. Wouldn't you like to feel a safety that couldn't be threatened by anything? Fear and guilt and anger and manipulation, they are not fit offerings for yourself. Take the covers, look at what, take the covers off, take the covers off and look at what you are afraid of it's just the anticipation. It's just the anticipation that's frightening you. You're not guilty. You're not sinful. You make mistakes. You make mistakes. Yes, you make mistakes. We all have made mistakes. But mistakes are for correction. Mistakes are for healing. So this, this fear and hatred or upset it's not going to leave you without help. But help is here. 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 Learn to be quiet. Can you be quiet in the midst of anger and turmoil? Learn to be quiet. If you can just breathe when you're getting ready to go off and you're getting ready to say something you will probably be apologizing for later. Learn to be quiet in the midst of conflict. Learn to be quiet in the midst of turmoil. Learn to be quiet. Learn to be quiet. Learn to be quiet. Learn to be quiet. Would you learn to be quiet? Would you, would you, would you learn to be quiet? Learn to be quiet. Learn to be quiet. Did you say I had to learn to be quiet? <laughs> yeah, you have to learn to be quiet in the midst of turmoil because quietness is the end of strife. Quietness is the end of strife. Look straight at every image. Look straight at every image that rises to delay you. Look straight at every image. Look straight at everything that rises to delay you. The goal is love. 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 The goal is happiness. The goal is love. The goal is peace. The goal is peace. The goal is abundance. The goal is abundance. The goal is unity. The goal is happiness. The goal is God. And don't you know that love belongs to you? Happiness belongs to you. Despite your dreams, your false ideas, your negative thoughts you might have about yourself. Love still, happiness still belongs to you. Peace still belongs to you. Don't forget to listen to this and to watch this at least four times because it's through repetition that you accept a new way of looking at things. You have to tell yourself the new way over and over and over and over and over. Share this video. Mighty Companion. 
May the course be with you. I love you. <laughs> love you.